What's up, nerds? So I watched House of the Dragon episode four, and I'm just telling you right now, this episode was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. I have really enjoyed this season so far. I know a lot of people are like, it's a slow burn. I'm like, it's not a slow burn. I mean, like, I'm sorry that you like character develop. You don't like character development and you don't like, you know, building up to the climax of something, but you're just an impatient asshole. I mean, I'm impatient, but some people are just so freaking impatient. They're like, I want dragon fights episode one. It's like, calm down. So this episode, we got the battle at Rook's Rest, which was very cool. I will talk about that in a little bit. But I just want to say, like, we did we did get some sadness also, but we knew it was coming. Well, if you read the books, you knew it was coming. And I was really, I wasn't looking forward to it, but at the same time, I was looking forward to it. You know what I'm saying? And I really did enjoy this episode. I'll tell you right now, the acting on this episode is just fantastic. Fantastic. I'll tell you what. Eve Best is such a good actress. I remember her from, um, what was that nurse show that she was on? Nurse Jane or whatever? I don't remember. It doesn't even matter. And she's just great. I love her. I love her as Rainies. But uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get into this breakdown. We're going to talk about it and stuff. And I just I just really love this, this show. I love this world that we're in. I can't wait for that spinoff. Uh, it's going to be great. All right, let me get to this breakdown and my thoughts and everything, and then I'll share the rest of it at the end. All right, here we go. So Damon dreams that he decapitates a young Rhaenyra who accuses him of treason. And this, like, talking head is, like, totally creepy. Okay, I thought that this dream sequence was was good uh, and and creepy. Because when the when he chops off her head and it just starts talking, like, ah, rah, with the echo effect or whatever, I was just like, ah, uh, creepy. Um, but I did like it. I also see, I like that Millie Elcott. Like She's so pretty. I mean, she's got some big ass teeth, but that's fine. Um, but she's pretty. And I mean, you know, she's, they're not, they're using her sparingly, which I was, I'm like, that's, you know, fine. But I'm like, I could use some more of some Millie Elcott. Anyways. But uh, I did like seeing her. And when he, and it just makes me like the whole time I'm wondering, like, and it's so great because da uh, a demon, you're all like, does he love the crown more or does he love Rhaenyra more? Like, which one does he love more? And it's like, you got to make up your mind, buddy. And I think that you should pick Rhaenyra because, do you, I mean, like, you're you're kind of a loser a little, just a little bit, just a little bit. And so I just like a small piece of me, even though I do like Damon, I like Damon a lot and I love uh, Caraxes. He's great. But I, I just the whole time I'm just like, come on, man, like you got to get it together. Like you need to stop doing this thing where you're all like, uh, woe is me. I wasn't king and everything. Get off your your get over yourself. Just get over yourself because nobody's interested in this nonsense. Laris observes Archmaester Orwell preparing the abortion tea for Allison and Orwell professes ignorance when Allison asks who uh, Viserys named as heir. Okay, so Lars, he, I don't like him. I don't like the cripple. I don't just don't like him at all. I, I like, I, I wouldn't trust him, which which Allison doesn't, but I don't like him. But so this, uh, the Archmaster, he brings the abortion tea. And we've seen this before in the past. And I like how he set that down. And she just, and she's all like, do you think that Aegon should be king. And do you think my, my husband, Viserys, wanted him to be king? And he's like, I have no idea. I didn't talk to him about that kind of stuff. Which was a good answer, because it's true. And, like, what what, what is he going to say? Like, no, your son shouldn't be king. I mean, like, come on, Allison. But then when she's talking to Lars, who knows that she's drank the abortion tea, uh, and he's not, she's not using her handmaids because she makes that rock claw thingy and puts it on her belly because he said that the tea wasn't going to make her feel good. And, um, and then he, he tells her, talks about how she needs to tell she, 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 we should give into our indulgences, which I don't think he's right, but whatever. And, um, and then he, uh, he says, he says something along the lines of, you know, do you, is she, something along, she says, when it comes to Aegon or Rhaenyra being, uh, Aegon being king and maybe the, the, if she was wrong kind of thing. She says it doesn't matter. The people are going to believe what they want to believe. And she's so right. It doesn't matter anymore because it's already set in motion. And the people are going to believe what they want. And nobody was really going to accept a queen. I think that's what Lara says. And that's probably true. Like they they want a king and 
uh, that's just the end of it. And so I thought that that was really interesting. Aegon is frustrated that Aemon and Christian planned campaigns without him, including besieging Rook's Rest instead of Hall. But I mean, like, Aegon's just a big dummy. So Aegon, he's sitting in his little council, right? And they're just making decisions without him, which is disrespectful. I just want to say that. They could loop him in, but he's just a big freaking dummy. Like, this kid doesn't know how to be a king. He doesn't know how to be a dragon rider. He doesn't even know High Valyrian. Like, his brother is all like, fine, I'm going to stop embarrassing you because you're looking like a big idiot in front of these grown-ass men. And I'm going to talk to you in High Valyrian so they can't understand us. Which I don't know. I don't know if I could tell if they were under, they could understand or whatever. But I like how he's all like, go to be da And he's like telling him like, hey, you know, did you have any great plans? I mean, you hire these like freaking idiots to be your your white cloaks, which one of them is behind him asleep. He's all like asleep, like standing asleep. I don't know if he was asleep, but he was just all like, and I'm like, I'm like, listen, Aegon, buddy, I get it. You were first born, even though he doesn't look like it. Aemon looks like way more of an older brother than Aegon does, but it's like, whatever. I don't think that the the casting, like, like age-wise, it looks like he's older. But anyways, so he's all like, um, he's like, listen, you can't even, you can't even get the right white cloaks. And he's like, you do you have some great plan that I'm unaware of, brother? Please fill me in. And then he can't even talk High Valyrian. Like, he's so stupid. He didn't even learn High Valyrian as a kid. And I'm all like, you know, you'd think you would take your your king possible kingship seriously and he doesn't he doesn't take it seriously because he's a big freaking idiot and you know people like this i've seen people like this in life he just thinks he's just god's gift to earth so he doesn't have to do anything he doesn't have to learn anything has to do anything because it will all just come to him and it's like no you freaking idiot either either you know you can be a savant or whatever and, and just know all know a bunch of stuff but you are obviously not so you got to work your butt off to learn this shit and you didn't do the work so now you look like an idiot because you are an idiot so i loved that and like i love how he's all like i want her in hell and i liked how i liked how amond was all like or, or Lars was law like I took all the gold from the castle there's no more gold so he, he Damon is just going to run it he's just, just going to chase his own tail trying to fix that place up. It's just, it's, he's, and I liked his line about like, that, that castle's more crippled than I am. And I was like, Ooh, that's a good one. I like that Lars. I don't like you, but I like that line. And so I thought that that was, I thought the whole council situation was great. And uh, I just really like that. And so they're going to go after Rook's rest because it cuts off Rhaenyra from the mainland because she gets stuck on her Island and it's a small castle. So it'll be an easy victory. And then they can get a victory on their side and they can get boost up morale because they get a victory. Christian beheads Lord Darklin, who refuses allegiance. So Christian beheads this uh, Darklin guy. And I did like how the Darklin guy was all like kingmaker. He's like, he's like, uh, and he was like, you know, this is a better, uh, you're a treason, you're a traitor. So this is a better death than you deserve. He's all like, I hope the same befalls you or some crap like that and everything he spits and everything like that. And then he beheads him. And then all the soldiers, they bend the knee, which I'm all like, you know, it sucks that they, that you're just killing off your, your own, your own countrymen, uh, you know, Lords and stuff because you, um, you just like, but in the book, um, in the book, Aegon does kill lords and um, a lady. I can't remember Lady Fell or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember her name, but he 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 imprisons them because they take they take a a Rihanna a Rhaenyra side, and he he brings them on. He's like, I'm going to give you this chance to bend the knee. Either you bend the knee, or I'm going to chop your head off. You got you got you got a choice. And I think four or five. Uh, four lords and one lady, they're just like, no, I'm not going to bend the knee to you. Uh, Rhaenyra is the queen and you're just, you know, uh, a usurper. And so he beheads them and I believe a couple of their guards and then uh, like a, a, a handmaiden or something like that. And he puts their heads on spikes and puts them on the south gate. I believe it's the south gate. Please don't quote me on any of this. I haven't read the book since before season one. So I'm I'm trying to remember all this in my head. Um, which, so this is kind I think they're just kind of like, Showing like kind of doing that, but in showing in this one scene, Damon meets Alice Rivers, who says Hall is haunted, and she gives him a sleeping drink 
and he dreams that he sees his uh, dead wife's ghost while he's in council. So Damon meets Allison Rivers. Now we saw her in the last episode. Now she's a witch, and she and her and her and Amon, they're kind of doing their thing. I do not like this actress that they picked for her. I always envisioned Allison Rivers to be very like a, somewhat attracted. I am not attracted to this woman. I do not think she's like that hot. But at the same time, maybe she'll like seduce him with her personality. I doubt it. Um, her personality always seemed weird to me, but like, you know, one of those weird girls. But whatever, it's fine. So she says that Heron Hall is Hall and Taunted, but I think she's like working her little voodoo magic, which is, is fine and everything on him. And she gives him this like sleeping draft. Now, I just want to say right now, when it comes to this, this drink and the abortion tea that Allison drank before, they just said on the thing, and these people just drink it willy-nilly. And I'm all like, I'm not going to drink that. I don't know what's in that. Why are they, why are these people drinking, especially Damon from this bitch? You don't know this bitch. You don't know this bitch. And you're just drinking something she's giving. She's like, drink this. It'll help you sleep better. Um, yeah, forever. Like, why are you drinking this, dude? Stop drinking shit from strangers. I mean, Allison was a little different because that was the the uh, Archmaster. So he, you know, he's been trained in that stuff. But this bitch, I, I, I literally be like, I just met you, honey. Like, psh, pour one out for my homies because I don't know you. And I'd rather be sleepwalking than drink whatever poison tea you're going to give me. So, so he blacks out, right? And that right there should have been a, like a warning. Watch, it, it just keep watching this situation because Damon's not very smart in this situation. But so he's he's talking to um, the the Lord of uh, the Blackens. How uh, the gosh, I can't remember the names off the top of my head. Anyways. And he sees the ghost of his wife, like a, a handmaiden comes in, she's pouring him some wine or whatnot, and he sees his his dead wife and everything. It was nice to see her. It's nice to see all these these actresses come back, but at the same time, I'm all like, eh, whatever. But I'm just like, see, buddy, you're seeing stuff after the tea, I, and you blacked out. I wouldn't drink that tea no more. I would I would stay far away from Allison Rivers, which he won't because he's stupid. Rhaenyra returns to Dragonstone, right, and she agrees to go to war. And she's volunteering to dragon ride to Rook's Rest. But they're all like, no, don't do it because we need you because you're like the queen and everything. So Rhaenyra volunteers herself instead. So Rhaenyra finally comes back to Dragonstone, right? After she had a little visit with Alicent, right? And she's like, she's she's she says something along the lines of, you know, you all criticize me because I was reluctant to use dragons. And Allison is correct, like because earlier Eamon says this war won't be fought, it won't be won with just dragons. It will be won with dragons flying behind men. And um, we'll find out later and stepping on them. So she's all like, I don't want to, I don't want to go to war with the dragons because, you know, it, you know, but she's like, we're going to, we're going to have to do it. We're just going to have to do it. So then she goes and she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to ride to, Crooks uh, to Rook's Rest. And they're all like, no, you can't ride to Rook's Rest. You're the queen. You have to stay here because if you die, then what do we do? We just get, we just say, all right, she's dead now. You won. We're done kind of thing. So they're like, you have to stay behind. So she's like, well, I can't send um, my son and I can't send, you know, uh, anybody else because they're not, ex I can't send anybody else because they're not experienced riders. So then Rainey's, she, is like, I have to go, and I'm going to go. And uh, so she she gets ready to mount Maylees. So she's like, me and Maylees are going to go. And I was like, man, this is a bummer, because I really, Maylees is my second favorite dragon. I like the red ones better than everything, because, of course, like I said, I've told you before, Craxis is my favorite dragon, the red worm. He's my favorite. But then Maylees is right behind him, and then it's probably Cyrax and everything. Although I do like some of the other ones, like Sunfire is pretty cool. Anyway, it doesn't matter what my favorite dragons are. Anyways, okay. So.
So Aegon removes Allison slash her husband's books, the history books and everything. And then she tells him to do nothing as his wise advisors act. Even she thinks he's just a big moron. And so he's frustrated and drunk. So then Aegon, he flies Sunfire to Rook's rest. Allison is in Aegon's room, right? And she's all like, where did your father's books go? And he's like, I removed them. She's like, all that history from those pages. And he makes his guards leave, which they bump into each other. I would fire those freaking guards. I'd be like, you guys need to get the fuck out. I, you're all fired. Uh, you know, uh, uh, dishonor. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your family. All that stuff. But he's like, I didn't burn them, mother. I just removed them. Which I was like, good point. Uh, I was like, just tell her where they are so she can go check them out. But he really should pick up a book every now and then. Like, uh, I, like I make my kids read. You, you got to make your kids read. So, or they'll turn out to be dummies. They get TikTok brain and everything. Like this kid who has become an alcoholic like Jesus. So, and she tells him, because he's all like, you know, they won't tell me anything. And she's like, yeah, because your job is to do nothing. You just sit there and listen to your advice. Yeah, you make decisions. But on the on on the 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 word of your counsel and he's not being smart like he wants to make all these decisions without getting like advice from anybody else and i'm all like no get the advice from these people because they 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 can give you good advice i mean these people aren't here for no reason they're there for a reason so listen to them you big dummy he's not he's so stupid like he's all like I'm bold. You bore me. And I'm like, maybe because you're stupid. Maybe that's why they bore you. I'm like, because what they were saying was not bad. So he gets frustrated and he's drunk and everything. And he's like, I'm going to go join this fight. Right. So he goes and gets on his, his, his dragon. Right. And I liked that while this is going on, uh, Rhaenyra is telling her son about, um, the, the song of ice and fire. Uh, and, and she, and you know, all that stuff. And I really, I really liked that. Cause I liked her voiceover with the dragons getting prepared and seeing Maylees. And I just love that. I love seeing the relationship of the dragon rider with their dragon. It was really great. Like, like just the way they interacted, like you could tell Sunfire really had a connection with, uh, Aegon because, because he like pushed him with his, his muzzle and everything. And then he's just like, yeah, buddy, we're going to fucking do this. And Maylees. And Rainey's, they had a different connection because she she hugged it and she's like, we're going to go, we're going to go to battle one more time, old girl. And I'm just like, the connection there, you just like felt something. So I really liked that a lot. I really, really loved it. Rhaenyra's on Maylees burns Christian's troops like to a cinder, like they are crispy critters. Now, while Aemon and Vagar are hidden, right? And they're just like in the woods, just chilling and everything. So Aemon sees Aegon and Sunfire arriving and allows them to advance unsupported. During the battle, right, which is going on full strong, it was, it was really strong and everything, and the castle was really small and everything, and they attack that because one because the lord of that, the guy that owns that castle, he's on the council, Rhaenyra's council or whatever. So Rhaenys comes in with Maelys, and they're just burning those troops up, like, and everything, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm burning, and everything. So then Aemon and Vagar. They're huge, right? So they are trying to keep it secret. And how do you keep it secret? You hide this motherfucker because it's like the size of like, you know, a football field. And let me just say right now, I'm sorry. I said it before. I'll say it again. Vagar is an ugly dragon. I mean, she just looks like an old rock with moss on it. I'm like, ew, she's ugly. She's not pretty at all. Like, not like, not like Maylees. Maylees is cute. She's got the horns and everything. And the other dragons, they're like, like they're pretty. Like a Cyrax, I think is the prettiest one in terms of like looks wise, but they're like pretty, not freaking Vagar. Vagar is just old and ugly. You know, it just looks like, like an old boot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways. So then, when Aemon sees Aegon fly over with Sunfire, he's all like, stay put because we're going to let this motherfucker, because he's stupid, and we're just going to see what happens, I kind of thing. And I think it's because, you know, he's vying for the crown, right? Which we'll talk about that at the end. So he just lets his brother just fly over and get into a fight, right? So, uh, so but he's just like, I, but he can't hold back too long because Sir Christian Cole is like, come on, Aemon, where are you? So he knows that Aemon is supposed to fly in. So he can't, he can't not go and help his brother out because then it makes him, because like later on, if Christian says anything, it makes him look bad. Maylees mauls the shit out of Sunfire. Like she just, uh, just she just grabs and, and starts clawing and everything. It's totally crazy. But then Amon, um, <clears throat> Amon, 
has Vagar burn both Melee's and Sunfire, right? And so Sunfire plunges to the ground, boom, boom, boom. And then Rhaenyra's attacks Vagar, who also falls. So Melee's, she just like, she just grabs a hold of Sunfire and just starts scratching and, and clawing everything and the fire and everything. Super great. But then Aemon, he comes in. And I love how um, uh, Aegon was all like, yes, brother, help me or some crap like that. I can't remember exactly what he said. And then uh, Aemon just jacaris and just blast the fuck out of both of them. And I was like, ooh, I was like, I was like, cause he thought he was going to get some help and he didn't get help. His brother was just like, no, it's go time, brother. You're stupid. Um, I need to, to do this kind of thing. But then uh, Sun, so Sunfire, he's fallen, right? And now in the books, he did get one of his wings like practically ripped off. Like, um, I don't think they did that in this. Um, and then um, Sunfire becomes just a dra uh, land dragon. Like he can't fly after this. He just, he can only be on the land and everything. And he stays around Rook's rest. So there's, it's which is fine. But at the same time, I'm like, that's a bummer that your dragon is no longer airborne kind of thing. So then Rhaenyra's and Ve uh, attacks Vagar, right? And Vagar, he kind of loses this first little, this first little tete tete, right? And falls to the ground, right? And then Vagar is just stomping on soldiers as she walks. And I'm all like, yo, these are your dudes. You're just munching them on the ground and everything. And I liked also how the blood, when it dripped down, it was like boiling um, um, oil and everything because it just like hit those dudes. And I'm like, even their blood is on fire kind of thing. I was like, very cool. And then Melee's, she like circles, right? And then Vagar rises and grabs Melee's by the neck. And then Melee's and Rhaenyra's fall to their deaths. Okay, so then Melee's, she like, she comes around, right? And she's just flying close to the ground. Now, I... Could have told you right off the bat. I'm like, sweet pea, you did this exact same thing. You flew towards the ocean and then came up above the castle when you first arrived. Why would you do this again, right? And she does this thing where she turns back around, right? And she's like, should I retreat? And I, and the, the whole time I kept thinking, she's not retreating. She's not getting the fuck out of there. Like whereas when Vagar went down, I thought she was, well, I didn't, I knew she wasn't going to bail, but I was like, is she going to bail kind of thing? Even though I knew she wasn't going to. And I think she didn't bail because she's like, I need to finish this because I had the opportunity. And, and what's his phase? Damon called her out for it. He's, she's like, I had the opportunity to take, take uh, Aegon out right at the beginning of this. And I didn't do it. And I think she regrets that. And that's why she didn't retreat. She's like, let's do this. And so when Vagar came, I even, I was like, oh shit. Uh, that was my reaction. I didn't do any reactions for this one, but I was like, oh shit. And he just chomps down on her neck. Right. And I liked the look that she gave, gave, um, Rainey's right before when she like looked back and she's all like, she's like, you know, she's like attack, attack Maylees kind of thing. And so clamps down and Maylees dies. Right. And I think a little piece of Rainey's died before that also because you could just see in her face and then vagar because and vagar just uh lets her go and then they just plummet and i was just like man that's crazy that just sucks and when they hit it was like a bomb you know because they're just they're they're their blood is you know boiling they breathe fire you know they you know and 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 they just as soon as it boom, kind of thing so christian he's like knocked out unconscious during the battle right so he wakes up, right? And he's like looking for the king and everything. And he finds Aemon and Aegon. But Aegon is like lying with Sunfire. And they're all like, you know, smoky. So when Christian Cole wakes up, right? I, I did like how he was like that guy. He was all like, come on, we have to go find the king. And that, that guy was just turned like ash. He just crumbled to the ground. I was like, oh, that's good. I like that. And so he goes to find the king. And he finds Aemon who picks up his knife, which that's the dagger that kills the witch king. Which I'm like, ugh, whatever. It just makes me think of Game of Thrones and the last season and the last like three seasons. Trash. Anyways. So he he's like, he's like, where is the king? Right. And and I and I was like, I was like, are they trying to like Eamon finds him first? And so he's you can hear both uh Sunfire and Aegon breathing, right? They're doing the, the Darth Vader <gasps> kind of thing. And so I, I love the way the dragons make noise. Like it's like, like wah, wah, wah. it's like vibrating, but like a breathing vibe. It's so good. So good. Anyways, so he finds him and he just drops to his knees and everything. Now, 
a spoiler alert because in the books now in the books Aegon he does uh he does he is not dead he is very much injured and Aemond he takes control and starts ruling like not like a king he just starts making decisions on behalf of Aegon's and he starts doing things for Aegon Aegon does come back and we do see Sunfire again but like I said before Sunfire can't fly anymore Sunfire is down for the count like not dead for the count but down for the count he is he is land ridden and he can't he can't he won't be able to um but he does we do see him fight later on because dragons even though even though he can't fly they're still very formidable like it's not just one of those things where you can just like oh like uh you know whatever so in all in all this episode was absolutely fantastic i loved every minute of it i thought it was so good for people that are like, oh, it's a slow burn. What are you talking about? Like, I'm sorry. And I, I saw somebody tweet that this bad, this dragon battle was not long enough. And I'm all like, what are you talking about? That dragon battle was fantastic. And if that's what you're looking for every episode, I'm sorry. You guys are just like stupid. Like, I'm sorry. That's just not how it is. Because like uh, a Eamon said, this war will be fought um, with dragon or men riding uh, with dragons behind them. So I think that that's what you just need to prepare yourself for. Uh, so, and, and I'm sorry, but this show is just, this show is top notch in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I saw people saying it was boring and I'm all like, what are you talking about? This, is, you know, I don't understand you, but it's just fine, I guess, but whatever. But those are my thoughts on this episode, you guys. I really loved it. I re I can't wait for next week. I can't wait. I, I mean, like, I mean, I know, I don't think we're going to see, because they've already signed on for a season three, and the battle above God's eye, that will be, uh, I believe, that that's pretty much the end of the war. So I think, but I can't see them going past three seasons. I just can't see it. I mean, there's just so, it's only one book, and the book does not read like a regular novel. So it's like, I don't see it going past three seasons. I hope they don't do that, where they just keep stretching it and stretching it, because there's just no, no no point. Like, you're doing all these, they've already got a spinoff, uh, you know, filming. So just keep doing your spinoffs. That's fine. We can we can do spinoffs. There are great stories in the Song of Ice and Fire series you know everything so all right but those are my thoughts you guys tell me what you guys thought about this episode did you like it did you not like it what was your favorite part of course it was that dragon battle are you bummed Maylees is dead which dragon is your favorite like i've always said Craxes is my favorite but tell me what you guys thought go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below if you like this video go and hit that like button you know i won't mind if you're my channel please hit that subscribe button i greatly appreciate it and we'll see you guys on my next house of the dragon breakdown and review you guys have a good week Jakaris. bye